Hi guys. Um, I'm going to just wait a minute and see if anybody else jumps on here. Yeah, we've got a few people jumping on. Give it a one minute. <laughs> okay, I might uh, get started. So um, my name is Megan. I worked with the VET program for, I want to say like four or five years now. Um, and I think I helped, I know Nav and uh, Hannah, and I can't remember if I was there. No, that you were before. No. <laughs> um, Anyways, uh, we are doing a bit of a panel with some current uh, alumni um, vet students. Um, so I will pass it along. Oh, I guess one other thing I should mention is if you guys have questions, pop them in the chat. Um, just make sure it's to all participants. And then I will um, be moderating and I'll, I'll pop them in. Like I'll ask the panelists uh, those questions. So if I'm going to actually just... Make sure that I can see the chat. Okay. Can you, I guess, can I, you guys hear me? I just want to make sure that that. Yeah. And this says yes. Anybody else? Yeah. Uh, let me see here. Let me see. Okay, perfect. You guys can hear me. Okay, good. Um, so uh, maybe to just to jump right in, can you guys each do a bit of an introduction and tell us your story, where, where you are? Uh, in Australia and like where you're from in Canada um, or like what you're doing now if you're not studying uh, and then we can go from there. Maybe I'll, I'll just start with Jenna because she's at the top of my screen. Sure, so I'm Dr. Jenna Gold and I am currently living in Melbourne, Australia. Um, I'm from London, Ontario to begin with and I came to Australia to do my veterinary degree. Um, I did my degree at Melbourne University I also did a year at Queensland University prior to that um, and then I went home to Canada for a couple of years but came back for love and now I'm married and living in Australia. <laughs> so that's where I'm at now. Um, currently I'm working as a clinical coordinator for a TAFE which is like a college um, over here teaching vet nursing and I run a little veterinary clinic for a vet nurse. Also, I'm busy. <laughs> yeah. <You're> busy. <laughs> Um, perfect. Uh, maybe I'll jump down to Nav because he's the next on my panel. Okay. So I'm originally from Toronto, Canada. Um, I'm in my third year of vet science at the University of Queensland. And I'm just, yeah, loving the wildlife here in Australia. I'm, I'm under weather, obviously. <laughs> Love the weather and the wildlife. <laughs> and then, yeah, the nice weather, it's summertime, or is it just spring now? So it's it's fall. yeah it's, it's fall yeah oh it's fall it's the opposite of us yeah, yeah, yeah it's the opposite yeah I know I have to get used to it as well like I have to always like double check and think and make sure I'm saying the right thing <laughs> okay perfect now Hannah so my name is Hannah of course I am originally from Calgary but I did my undergraduate degree in Ontario at Western um, and then I am currently a DVM3 at Uni Melv. So I'm living in Melbourne, Australia. Um, I actually live in Werribee right now, which is the rural campus uh, for where the vet school is located for third and fourth year. Um, I just came over after being at home for two years for my first two years of my degree um, with COVID and all that fun stuff. So I've been here for two months and I'm finally settling in. I had only been here for one month in my first year when I first moved here and then everything locked down and I went home and studied online and worked in clinic. So I'm back. Happy to be back. Yes, definitely. Going from middle of winter to middle of summer was like a whoa. <laughs> um, it was it was hot and the days were long and <laughs> it was really quite nice honestly um okay I'm going to um jump into the first question why did you choose to study in Australia I don't know if one of you want to like start I can I can start if you want um so when I started so I've been a vet for eight years now but when I started I'd done my undergraduate degree in zoology at University of Guelph 
And when I came out, it was that time when there weren't a lot of biology jobs, still seems to be the case out there. And I decided to, to go to vet school. Um, and at that point, I was also really interested in traveling. So I thought it was a great opportunity to join the two together to travel and to do uh, another degree that would get me further in my career. So it just happened to work out that that's what uh, this is where I came and Australia was always a place I wanted to visit. So travel and education. Yeah. I can go next. Um, so I chose Australia because um, Australia is one of the only places in the world that has an undergraduate program. So people can go straight from high school into vet school. So being from Ontario, um, you have to do an, the only vet school there is OVC, which is in Guelph. And it, one is very competitive to get in. And two, you have to do an undergrad, which is three years, and then apply to vet school, which is done for four years. It's a total of seven years of schooling versus with, if I came to Australia straight after high school. Um, it's just straight five years and I graduate and I work. So. Yeah, and that's if you get in the first try at Guelph, because often in, it's, exactly. it takes quite yeah. a few tries for students. Oh, there's yeah. a, a, not a ton of spots there. Exactly. Hannah? Um, I am from Calgary. So the only school in Canada that I'm eligible for is University of Calgary. I wasn't super keen on staying in Calgary for a degree. That's also why I did my undergrad elsewhere. Love the province, love the hiking, um, just really enjoy doing education away. Uh, Uni Mel was a really great choice for me just because of its accreditation status with uh, North American schools, European schools, and um, Australia and New Zealand. So it gives me a lot of options when I graduate for where I wanna be in the world. And that it was really attractive to me. Um, my husband can theoretically work anywhere and has aspirations as well of potentially going overseas and working. So having those options of different licensing ability um, was really important to me, but also the chance to go home if I really wanted to and ride my navli and do all that fun stuff. Yeah, that's great. Um, okay, next one. Uh, what have you found most cha or challenging, sorry, about studying abroad? Right. what did you in Jenna's case? <laughs> I think for me, it'll be a little bit different than probably these guys. Um, when I first came over, there was no such thing as Skype. <laughs> so I came over and knew I may not see my family for four years. Um, luckily, Skype was developed probably within that first year that I was here. So for me, being far from family and really only having full free numbers at that point to call home was a, a big challenge. Um, I think also living overseas, um, ha having an international student loan, I was really keen on not making that loan too big. So I did a lot of working while I was studying, which was challenging, um, as well as relied on a lot of people to help me. So there were a lot of little challenges like that, just so I could keep my finances under control while I was studying abroad. Yeah. Yeah, that's a pretty common one for vet students because um, the funding, the programs are really similar to med in terms of like tuition cost, but the funding isn't always the same. Um, mm -hmm. so, yeah, that's pretty common. Uh, now? Um, yeah, I'm pretty much the same. Definitely missing like my friends and family. Um, fortunately, enough, fortunately enough, my sister actually moved to Australia in 2019. So I do have my sister here. My mom is back home in Canada. So I miss her a lot. And I was also really fortunate to bring my dog over from Canada when I moved here. So he lives with my sister so I can frequently visit him. Um, and I do miss skiing a lot. I really want to go skiing. And everyone talks about these like mountains that are in Australia, like in um, South Australia, which I have to go skiing for, but I just haven't found time <laughs> with COVID and it's everything. It's not the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's anywhere near the same. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, um, I think for me, it's going to be a little bit of a different story because I studied online for two years. That's obviously some, not something that's going to hopefully happen again. Um, and that will hopefully be a unique experience. I was very fortunate to have had amazing clinical mentorship throughout those two years. So despite being online, I was applying skills in clinics, in ER, in surgery, in GP practices. 
primarily small animal, but I also did large animal um, because I had that support system around me. And it's, it's left me with great clinical skills and a really good understanding of kind of the, the vet space. Um, so it really wasn't a detraction. And I was home with my family. I got married. I got to hike. I had all of those wonderful things that I, I miss now um, because they're such a big support to me. Um, so I think that above all probably was the biggest, I guess, the hardest thing for me was just being online all the time and being in the same room. But I also now being here kind of just to contrast it, it's just the time management. I do five days of school during the week, like nine to five plus studying in the evening. I have to do because I was away and I couldn't do certain things in person, both days of my weekend are spent uh, on farm placements to catch up right now. And so that deeply, um, and I am tired, but it's still just so much hands-on now. And it's like coming back into a world of like, yes, like I finally, I know some of this stuff. I get to touch some critters. I get to put this in practice and it's, it's awesome. Even if it's busy. No, that's good. And then the best thing about the Melbourne program right now, I have been ch chatting with some first years that have just come over and have been actually kind of reflecting on this. I would say the way that we have a systems-based approach, which is very comparable to a lot of schools now, it's a program that's being adopted um, more and more. So we learn by kind of body system and we start out in first year with you kind of get thrown into case studies where you may not know all the ins and outs. And in the first two weeks, like you're not a veterinarian. You do not know how to make these choices or what tests exist or the final diagnosis of this, that, and the other thing, or even the presentation. But we start from the very start by doing a problem solving approach. So even when I was at home, for example, and I was in clinic having kind of had, like I was at the end of first year, I have some knowledge, but still some gaps. I could follow cases the whole way through because I knew how to problem solve in a veterinary capacity. And that was because of the way that the school teaches. And for me, that really changed, that kind of changes the game. I can get into a situation where I've never touched a wombat before and it's presenting with, you know, whatever, but I can still think it through in a systems-based approach. I can still problem solve exactly how I would anybody else. I can adapt my clinical exam that I have learned to do the best that I possibly can. And I can be handed theoretically anything and I can do it. It just depends on how I problem solve it that's going to be the biggest thing for me. And that is what I hope from other programs, but it's a huge thing here. Yeah, that's great. Um, another one, I guess this one's for Jenna. What made you decide to stay in Australia? You kind of touched on it for love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I did want to go home and I did go home uh, initially after graduation. Um, but while I was here, I actually met my husband now um, and we were friends throughout that time and decided that even though I went home you know we wanted to get back together so I came back to Australia to be with him um, and then we were still in that flux of where we want to be and now we have we have a daughter so we're trying to figure out where to go <laughs> do we stay in Canada we go to Australia but I think the great thing about Australia is it's so much like Canada in a lot of ways like if you think of Saskatchewan to British Columbia they're so different I just think of Australia as another part of Canada almost the values are very similar um, it's just a different environment and different accents that we have here I wanted to touch on Hannah's thing too about the Melbourne program I the thing I found about Australia is they have a lot of different vet schools and each vet school is very much tailored to a different type of program um, so like I said at the beginning, I did a year at Queensland University and it's very, very agricultural based. 
whereas Melbourne U Uni is very small animal based. And here in Australia, we still do all of the species. So in Canada, a lot of the vet schools, you go into a um, targeted approach. So you either go with large animals or you go with small animals. Here we still do it all. Um, so depending on what you want out of your education, you should look into the program as to what they put their focus on. So I found that was very different from Queensland University to Melbourne. Queensland was a lot more large animal focused, whereas Melbourne was a lot more small animal focused. And having come back to Canada to work, <laughs> I found that um, my education was 100% on par with the Canadian students. Um, if anything, we had more practical hands-on approaches than, than the um, Ontario students that I dealt with. So I was a lot more confident with my hands-on skills coming from Melbourne University as well. So just some side notes as well. That's great. There you go. <laughs> Um, Nav, I've got one for you too. Uh, what yeah. is your favorite thing about the UQ program? So um, I like that UQ was like straight on hands-on with the animals from year one. Like it was first semester when I was doing handling practice with large animals. Um, in Canada, I didn't have much experience with large animals. And like Jenna was saying, UQ is very agriculture based. Um, so they have so many, they have a huge campus out in Gatton, which is, um, full of large animals and they had the first years go in right away like I was preg testing in second year um for handling in first year everything mustering which I really liked and I I learned that way I learned better that way where I'm straight on hands-on which I really liked with you that's great perfect um there is a one more sorry Hannah's getting two questions and only because um this one's specifically about the brand new facilities at uh, Melbourne. Mm -hmm. Now that, were they there your first year? Was it being built? Oh, yes. it was there. Okay. Yeah, so my first year was the first year that this uh, new facility had been in operation. Um, as far as the Werribee campus, we, right. um, for reference, Melbourne Uni has two campuses that the vet school is located across. Kind of, it's kind of three, but mostly two now. Um, we have the Parkville campus, which is like downtown Melbourne city. That is where you spend the first two years. Um, and then in your first two years, one day a week, you would come out to the Werribee campus, which is the rural campus that the third and fourth years stay at. Werribee is a brand new facility. So in my first year, uh, a couple of years ago, it was the first year that it was unveiled. It was previously here, but they have since done this massive rehaul of it. So we have the teaching and learning building, which is uh, where I'm sitting right now. Um, I'm currently sitting in a seminar room um, and they have all these different facilities for us. So we have a new revamped library that has all of our resources plus quiet study space. We have seminar rooms where we can quietly learn or have group learning. We have a very large collaborative learning room um, where we often, if we have lectures, um, collaborative learning lectures where you have to talk and be in table groups um, and do activities, we have those in there. We have a lecture hall here as well. Um, and that kind of comprises the teaching and learning. They have now introduced um, a very revamped program for clinical skills here as well. And this is something that's very exciting um, that we are getting to use. It's for our OSCEs, which is like our hands-on practical skills exams. Um, we have separate floors of models where we can go practice anything 24 seven. So you can badge in and very um, a la Grey's Anatomy kind of practical skills lab, um, which is kind of fun for us. We can go and use the horse models, the bovine obstetric models, um, or we can do the IM injections, jugular um, catheters. Like we can do draping, surgical prep, uh, any lab work, anything and everything is in there. And those are in our teaching and learning building and attached in Werribee, we also have UVET, which is state-of-the-art hospital, referral center, ER, all that fun stuff. So that's on site, um, has specialists and all that fun stuff um, who are also our lecturers, which is very lovely. Has a sweet little cafe that is new. Um, so we get to have um, 
I know, is Jenna really jealous right now? Jealous, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we get to have that just if you need a coffee or if you need to pick me up during the day or didn't have time to bring your lunch or if you want to have lunch with your research mentor or, you know, what have you. Um, we have our pathology labs here uh, where we have full biosecure areas, research on site, and then we also have our um, herds of critters. So we have our teaching herds and our research herds and flocks. So we have sheep, horses, cows, and miscellaneous. Um, we have like our aviary with our parrots and things where we do our bird handling, um, you know, all that exotic fun extra bits. Um, and then we have our surgical uh, brand new. So we have surgical teaching, surgical prep teaching, and we have then the actual surgical prep and surgical theaters. So you have kind of that divide where you have an opportunity to learn it all before you get into the, where it really, really, really matters. Um, but it's the exact same, like it's mirrored. So you just get to have that full on hands-on prep um, in these magnificent facilities. I feel like I'm rambling, but honestly, it's just, it's like phenomenal. When you actually step into this building, it's like, whoa and Parkville on that note also has webs which is their new building um that one was I think revealed a year or two before I started so it has had some more use and again state-of-the-art labs entire um facilities uh, for vet students we have specific uh, vet student separate badge in areas so you're not kind of competing with the undergrad programs that are there for spaces which is really nice and they have something called the OBLA there. If you ever hear about it, it's an observation-based learning room. So it has a phenomenal specimen collection uh, where you can actually go and see pathological samples that are stored. Um, and they are just, it, it's basically a museum um, where you can actually sit in there and study. And so you can get your full visual learning-based uh, activity for all of your anatomy and pathology things. It's very cool. That was great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I feel like I was there. Um, and Nav, I actually wanted to ask you too, because UQ, like, whereas Hannah waited till she was in like, I believe third year to like stay uh, on Werby, UQ, yeah. you are at the vet, like vet campus, specific campus, like the whole time. Yes. Um, it's a little bit outside of uh, like um, Brisbane, but yeah. uh, how do you, how do you like Gatton? What's the facility? It's, like? it's really nice. It is a bit different, like moving Toronto. from Toronto. <laughs> yeah. Like I moved from Toronto, like the city to Gatton, which is a very small country town. Um, um, but it was amazing. Like people are really nice here. The culture is really great. And like, I didn't feel like I was left out or I didn't feel I was any different. Like they feel like, oh, you're from Canada. Like come in here. Like, like it was, it was really welcoming, which I really liked. And in terms of facilities, like Hannah was saying, it's very similar. We also have like our research herds and teaching herds and they have a lot of like students, like vet students who are involved in research as well. Like it's a voluntary thing. So if you want to be involved in research, you can get in there. Um, we also have wet labs where we do our dissections. Um, we have microscopic labs, which are dry labs. Um, and like Hannah said, we have like how she, uh, Melbourne has the um, teaching hub where we can go practice our um, practical skills. Uh, they have like animal models. We can do injections, suturing. Um, they have a whole fled, like full-fledged pharmacy. So we can go learn about all the drugs, um, cafes, libraries. And yeah, the Kangam Bayan Yuki has been really good. <laughs> so even though it's like, I know Gatton it's when people are like what's in Gatton it's it's yeah. small but it the campus has like everything you need it's all right there and you're there from year one yep I was there for, I'm here for since 2020 I haven't left I stayed through COVID um like I said my sister was in the Gold Coast so I went and lived with her when during the lockdown but um it, it, it was really good um yeah everything's on campus it's everything's in walking distance so it's good and I actually live on campus so it's um very convenient for me just wake up in the morning and walk to my ADM lecture <laughs> did you live on campus from like in first year as well yes yeah and then yes. that was that the one that your year was interrupted I think right yes yeah yeah so my year was interrupted um 
and I did stay um, for a brief period on campus. Um, even though lectures were online, um, it was it was good. There was a few of us that stayed together, and um, we formed like a good study group. So we decided to stick together and get through the first year, um, okay. which was really really beneficial. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, I have a few. Oh, uh, this one's to everyone, so I'll each give like give you guys each time to um, answer. But um, do any of you have? Uh, sorry, did or do any of you work in addition to going to school? And if so, is it animal related or is it, it just like a, you know, surfing job or something like that? Sure, I'll start again. Um, yeah, I worked all through my vet degree. Um, definitely possible, although it's a lot of work. Uh, it also depends on your study habits. So how much time you need to study for exams and things like that and what you can manage. I believe on a student visa, I was limited to 20 hours a week. So you can only work part time legally. Um, and I ended up starting off, I started my first few years, I worked at a general practice as, as a vet nurse receptionist. Um, I didn't have a lot of background knowledge and looking back at it, I'm like, wow, I learned so much from what I knew when I first started. But they popped me on the front desk and I did things like answering the phones and then eventually moved into handling animals. So that was great to have that hands-on experience. Um, my last few years I actually worked at the University of Melbourne's Emergency Center, which I think has changed names since I was there. It used to be Wake. I think you said it's called the UVet now. Yeah, um, so I worked. Now. Yeah, I worked in the ICU um, with the specialists being a veterinary nurse in the ICU, treating patients, working with them there. Um, I don't believe they're still doing that, but I would go to work, go to school from nine to five, have my dinner break, and go to work from six to one in the morning come back to school the next day so pretty invested time I only worked one or two days a week um, being part-time but it was uh, definitely helpful and with that I was able to pay my rent which was great yeah Nav are you working while you're studying so currently I am working but I'm working for UQ and um, I'm like a residential staff member on okay, hold cool. so it's an RA is that that's what we call it and I'm just like a kind of like a supervisor so I just make sure um all the residents are happy like they're not doing anything illegal or wrong and if there's ever like if they're hurt or anything I can tend to them um yeah that's about it but a lot of people in my cohort do work in like um the nearby grocery stores or the bakery in town and yeah like Jenna said it's very doable um, but it does depend on your study habits <laughs> I am not currently working, but that's mostly related to just having come back and having some catch up stuff to do. I was working through my first and second year, of course. I uh, was working in veterinary emergency, GP and referral surgery. Um, and I was doing, I was at home, so I wasn't on a student visa. So I was even doing like 40 hours a week, some weeks. Um, of work and then plus full-time school, um, which is doable. Obviously couldn't do it every week, but I, I did it um, and gained a lot from it and made money that I needed to take with me to come back here. So that was great. In my cohort, a lot of people are working, um, which is super easy to do. Being in Melbourne and having all the suburbs, there's a trillion different um, vet nurse positions that you can get depending on where you live and you know it can be in large animal small animal exotics whatever you really want it to be there's typically a position um, there's also lots of more casual positions um, that people do I pet sit every so often um, which is a great opportunity for me to have some cuddle time with some little friends because I don't have my dog here um, and you still make a little bit of money and uh, make some connections with the community. Yeah, that's cool. Um, one for Jenna. What was the process of transferring from UQ to Melbourne like, and was it driven uh, by you wanting more small animal focus? Yeah, good question. So it's a bit, bit weird. I ended up doing four and a half years of vet school. So U University of Queensland, I'm not sure if it's still the same, was a five-year program when I was there. Yeah. Um, so my first year was fairly basic things. Um, I actually ended up applying to UQ and New Melbourne at the same time, but for some reason my Melbourne application got rolled over to the following year. Um, so the reason I switched 
was at that time, University of Queensland was not um, AVMA accredited, so not accredited to come back to North America. So I would have had to do two extra tests. They are now accredited. So if that had been the, the um, thing at the time, I may not have moved, but I knew I also wanted to be a small animal vet. So I did actually find, I didn't really know that discrepancy between agriculture versus uh, small animal, but if um, when I made the move, I realized that Melbourne Uni was a bit more small animal focused and it ended up suiting me better in the long run. Um, but that was my main reason for moving was the accreditation at that point. Yeah. Uh, and then Jenna and Hannah, this must be a Melbourne question. Um, did or do you, do many students live in Melbourne and commute to Werribee or do they move west in third year? I, I, from what I've heard, most both. students move. Oh, they do both? both? Okay, I've always heard yeah. Um, people moving out there, but okay. Um, from an international perspective, so international students, a lot of us moved out to the suburb, um, out to Werribee from my class. We had six, so four Canadians and two United States students when I was in school, and we all moved out to that side of town. Um, a lot easier for commuting. I didn't need a car. I biked to and from um, school, which was fine. Um, but a lot of students in Australia go to the university closest to where they live. So a lot of them would just stay at their family homes and, and commute. And to give you an idea of commute, um, there's a really good train system here. So getting to and from is not hard, but if you're coming from the far east suburbs to Werribee, that's a three hour plus train ride one way. So you have to kind of consider where in, in Melbourne you live, but absolutely it's doable to commute, commute in on the train, not a problem. There's a train about 10 minute walk from campus, so not far. And what is it like finding accommodation in Werribee? Like, is it really rural there or is it, it's like suburb type, right? So it's changed. Um, all I've heard is in recent years, Werribee has kind of boomed into being its own like houses everywhere. Whereas it used to be a lot more rural is my understanding. And so when the school was initially put here, and I imagine it's probably going to even look different from when Jenna went here not that long ago. Um, there's it's primarily houses. And so it would be what I would consider like a commuter kind of city now, um, just as a, a kind of comparison. It would be very like um, like GTA kind of vibes um, as far as Ontario goes. And so it, housing is not hard to find here. It was competitive for me only because of the time of year I was coming in at. Um, when you are coming in to Werribee in January-ish as a third year, all of the people you are competing against are also veterinary students or families. So versus being in the city where I was a veterinary student in a postgraduate degree, willing to spend a somewhat reasonable amount of money to be close to the campus, you know, whatever you have. Um, you look really good on paper as a veterinary postgrad student. Um, you come out here and all of a sudden it's a family of five and you're competing for a house where it's either a family of five with like full-time stable jobs and income versus a veterinary student on loans. Um, and it becomes a little bit different. I found housing, obviously, I have a lovely home here. Um, it's something that I wanted. I wanted a separate house um, and I wanted a little yard and I wanted, you know, all those lovely things. And for me to drive to campus, for example, I can bike in 12 minutes, I can drive in six or I can walk in 35. So it's super easy. But like Jenna said, a lot of students that are from the area and went to and live in Melbourne or their families are from Melbourne and area, they often live at home and they will drive and commute and take the train. And uh, we even have students who didn't wanna give up the city life, for example, and who live in the Western suburbs rather than moving all the way out to Werribee just to save some time on the train. Because like you said, if you live in the East, it's, uh, it starts to get to be a very long train ride. Um, and it starts to be, if you don't study well on the train, for example, um, that's a lot of hours of your day that are spent kind of not doing a whole lot. Yeah. So depends on the person really and what you want to do in your time off. 
Um, does anyone else have any other questions? I, I can think of a couple more. I just, I just wanna catch, I think I got all of these. Um, well, I guess I can jump into this one. What um, advice would you guys give uh, someone considering to study vet abroad, specifically Australia? Um, I would say it's an investment. So make sure you're happy with that investment um, and make sure that the school that you go to, um, wherever you wanna end up in the end, you're gonna be able to get back to that place. Um, so make sure the accreditation crosses over, um, make sure that you can, if you wanted to go back to Canada that you can do that in the end, otherwise you're gonna be stuck a little bit. <laughs> um, but that would be my thing. Make sure the investment is appropriate for you and that the school is the school that you wanna to go to. Nav, any words of advice? Um, yeah, I definitely agree with Jenna with the investment thing. Like it is being an international student, it gets very pricey. Um, so make sure like that is something you do want to do. Cause I I know some people that are international students who get to like fourth year and they're like, oh, maybe this is not for me. And they like do another course and they have like this hundred thousand dollar debt on them. Um, and definitely have a good work ethic because it does, it does get quite stressful. Like um yeah, that's about it. <laughs> um, I will echo the investment as well. I mean, I feel like of all the questions that we get asked or that is of the major concern, most people are less concerned about moving across the world than they are incurring this debt. Um, <laughs> there's, there's ways to pay it off and there's, you know, means to do it. If this is your passion, then there's, it, you can absolutely do it. I think that it's, it's scary. It's scary to move across the world. It's scary to leave your family. It's scary to incur the debt, but it's also fabulously rewarding. And I think that I've made this decision for myself, knowing that I, I love veterinary medicine. I've worked in practice at home and I, I, genuinely can go into a prac here and have that rush of I honestly could not imagine doing anything else with my life and it kind of brings it full circle and that debt and that worry and having my family not here and not having those certain comforts it kind of just disappears you have this amazing experience and it is what you make of it yeah and I like I mean, I'm not a vet applicant or a vet student, but I know I've heard from so many students, like it's really stressful applying in Canada and it's like really discouraging because there's no, there's often everyone has one option. Um, and so like the Australian programs are, you know, attainable and it get, gets you where you want to go. Um, but yeah, there's the financial aspect to it that more stressful than, you know, the Canadian uh, tuition, but um, yeah, gets you. I will, yeah, I will say I've been out for eight years now. I'm still paying off my student loans. <laughs> so to give you perspective, but it's been manageable. So it's been fine. Um, you just have to, you know, adjust what you're doing with your life to match that. But I've still had a good quality of life. I've been able to save up enough money to move across the world a couple of times <laughs> um, and say is saving up for a house and things now. Um, and yeah, I think it's been, you know, a good investment for me. It's something that I've always loved. Um, it's a, a job that you have endless opportunity in. They, you know, we've got jobs anywhere in the world you want to go. You're always going to be able to have a job as a vet. Um, there's jobs everywhere at the moment. So uh, it's, it's something that is a good investment in your future if it's what you want to do. So, um, and it's definitely possible to, to, you know, pay off that debt, even though it is very daunting looking at it coming in. No, that's a good <laughs> point. Uh, yeah, I feel, I'm sure that's helpful for, I'm sure Navin and Hannah both are here, but uh, also like new coming, uh, new students. Um, do you guys, does any, anybody attending have any other questions you guys want to ask? We're about 45 minutes, so we can end it if no one else has questions, but um, yeah, feel free. We don't have anything after this, so we can continue it on a little bit. I know you guys are have a lot, a lot going on. I'm sure. Mm, I don't see any takers. 
do you guys have anything you wanted to like add before we go or any anything you wish you would have been told before uh, you guys went into school oh That's um i think living costs are a little bit more here that i know of um but i think it's been for me it's been an adventure of a lifetime coming here has been absolutely amazing i mean it changed my life i have a different country i live in different and, you know, family from this um and i have a degree that's been or and a degree in a career that's been building and building i started off in emergency general practice and practice management and i've just been building on that since so um every new job opportunity i've been adding on to that and i think Melbourne Uni and UQ were really amazing experiences. Both were very different schools, but I really enjoyed both of them. Um, and just such an amazing opportunity to come to this country and uh, be a part of, you know, the environment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the uh, atmosphere there, it's, it's like island life, but it feels very Canadian. I, I was only there visiting, but that's the vibe I got from Australia. I do recommend if you're still unsure of like, not i don't know if i want to study vet like yeah, i'm considering it not sure work in a vet clinic for a couple of months like if you get that core experience and know what a clinic experience is like you'll know for sure i had prior experience in canada working in vet clinics and i absolutely loved it and i just knew it was my passion and australia's like coming to australia it's a beautiful country it is full of wildlife full of beautiful places and the weather is amazing so if you you end up coming to Australia, you will not regret it. It is hands down one of the best countries. I think that I'll 100% echo that. I, if you're unsure, and especially with us talking back to the debt that you incur and the financial commitment, work in a clinic beforehand, go shadow some vets, even if it's really, and I, I know it can be hard to get a job per se in a clinic. It can be oddly competitive if you've never worked in a clinic before. Um, but, you know, volunteer, ask to shadow, do all of those things, reach out to as many people as you possibly can and see what you can do. Um, having that idea going in and kind of setting your expectations of what clinic life can look like and even other things in the veterinary world, um, like Jenna said, and like we know in school, but I didn't really know going in a veterinarian can mean a lot of things and it doesn't always have to look like your vet that you take your dog and cat to or your vet that walks out to the farm and palpates cows it can look like research it can look like academia it can look like a drug rep food rep it can look as like a consultant it can be so many different things so explore that explore the different facets before you go in and before you incur uh, this financial commitment and you will be so much more rewarded for it and your passions when things get hard in school because vet school is hard and there's moments when it feels like crud um, and that is just the facts <laughs> um, you can at least find that deep in yourself and those experiences to reignite it and go I still know in my mind that this is still what I want to do and that there's more opportunities out there for me. Amazing. Um, okay, we've got one more from another, from a, a, an attendee. Um, is there anything you wish you did differently or would change now looking back at your experience so far? Let's start with Jenna. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Two things. One, when I moved to Brisbane, I went on the word of someone for a place to live and it ended up being a very bad place for me to start. So I would recommend if you don't know someone in Australia, maybe do that first year in residence until you get your uh, footing rather than relying on people to find you homes. Um, and the other thing uh, would be, I would probably invest in a car. I didn't do that the entire time I was here. I did fine. I relied on public transport and people giving me rides around. Um, but I think I probably would have done that just to have a bit more freedom um, and not have to rely on people so much. Yeah, especially for placements. Oh yeah, true. Nav, anything you would have done differently? Um, definitely invest in a car. Like I fully agree with that. Coming to Gatton, um, if you wanna, if you need a break from Gatton, sometimes you will. <laughs> you need a car to get out of here. It's an hour and a half away from the city, so definitely I would, yeah, get a car. I second that. 
Um, I think that prior, if we're thinking about going back even prior to vet school, I would have loved to have some more large animal experience. My main experience and even just perspective was very horses and small animals. And horses only as like a very little kid, not that I don't really identify as a horsey person. Um, and so when you get into those um, classes, it, it was harder for me to put it in perspective of, oh yeah, like, okay, this is what a cow does. This is how they move when you move around with them. This is what sheep do when you move toward them. Just like things like that, just being around them. Um, it doesn't mean you have to be able to do all the medicine on them, but it's just having some experience of being with them. And ideally, if it's not your first time ever seeing a cow in person when you get to vet school, um, it can be helpful, um, but it's obviously not necessary. I would have appreciated that. Uh, I did get a car this year and I love it, <laughs> um, especially living out in Werribee. I think that being in Melbourne, having a car in the city is not necessary. It gets very difficult. Um, driving around Melbourne with the traffic, parking, you typically are going better off on trams and public transport or on a bike or walking in the city. But as soon as I come out here um, to get to a placement, I need to drive to hike and do the things that I love to do outside of vet school for that life balance. I rely on my car. Um, I shove my bike in the back of my car and head out to the little mountain um, that is around here. <laughs> it's like the Werribee Gorge. Um, and you, you can do all these wonderful, fun things. And I'm excited for when my husband comes to visit and I can take him to these places and not quote unquote, like waste my time on transit. It's never a waste, but I don't have a lot of time in my day. And that investment was hundred percent worth it when you're spending, you know, if you want to call it $300,000 or whatever, an extra 5,000 for a car is absolutely worth it and gets you wherever you want to go and it opens up your placement tremendously so yes and driving on the other side of the road is not as scary as it seems you pick it up very fast not daunting ask some older students they will help you I figured out all of my things that I needed to do all of the systems who I needed to contact based on the local students here um and they helped me through everything, um, you will, yeah, figure it out. Lean on your peers. We've got this. I know, uh, I, I know thing like in Canada, cars don't last that long because like there's salt on the road and things like, from what I've heard, like you can get an older vehicle for pretty cheap because they last forever. Because <laughs> there's salt, there's no winter. Well, I mean, there's winter, but not like the snow we get. Yeah. yeah, they don't freeze. When I was at, There's like no hills. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, when I was at Melbourne Uni, there was someone working in the ICU's boyfriend was renting out cars to students for cheap that were in good condition. So it might still exist. Ask around. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. I think so, that most but, of my peers now have gotten cars just for that reason, just quality of life reasons. And like, yeah, if you're in the rural area, it makes, you know, it makes more sense. Um, yeah. Okay, maybe. But there are car share services, I'm pretty sure as well. So if it's even if it's not somebody's partner doing it, there are like companies that also do it as well. Um, if you did need it. Cool. Um, does anyone else have any questions? If not, I might end it off. We were just about 50 minutes. So we'll let you guys get back to studying and work life. Uh, have a good, is it Thursday there? Yes. Yes. It is. yes. Yep. Almost the weekend. Almost. <laughs> okay. Well, I will let you guys go. Thanks so much for doing this. Uh, I'm really appreciated. I learned lots and I've worked with this programs for like four years now. So thank you guys so much. Hold on. Okay. Bye. Have a good night or a good day. <laughs> thank you guys. Bye.